Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Building with Open Talk series. My name is Monik, and I'll be going over how to add recordings to your application. Uh, recordings are also known as archiving, so just, just a disclaimer that I'll be using these words interchangeably throughout the webinar. Let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So just give me one quick second, and we'll get started right Oh, oops, looks like the wrong screen sharing button happened here. I'm going to go ahead and navigate out of this one. Uh -oh. Apologies for this. It looks like, uh, there you go. So we can start our share screen again. And I'm going to go ahead and do our entire screen. Perfect. There it is. And hopefully everybody can see my screen now. And we're going to start with the archiving and recording presentation. So today's agenda, we'll be going over the Open Talk basics. So, so session concepts, and then going to archiving, and then actually adding it um, with live coding in Node.js. So the first of all, I would go to the Open Talk basics. Um, these are essential concepts that you need to know to create an Open Talk applications. And these are sessions, tokens, publishing and subscribing. Sessions are essentially a chat room where everybody interacts. It has a unique session ID. Um, it also is generated by your app server, or you can use the account dashboard, which we'll uh, show you in just a little bit. Uh, but if you want to have an application where people are joining uh, at uh, you know times, so you don't want to hard code the session ID, you want to actually generate these on your app server. And this is where users can publish and subscribe to video streams. A token is a user's authentication to a session, so everybody has their own unique token, um, and it's you know it can expire after a certain period of time. You can give it moderation capabilities, um, or only subscribe only, or publish only capabilities, and we'll, we'll go over publishing and subscribing in, on the next slide. It can also have metadata describing the client, but the token should not have any personally identifiable information. So publishing and subscribing is a very simple to understand concept. It's way of user publishing. As you can hear me right now, I am publishing to you, um, and you are all subscribing to me uh, because then you can you know you can listen essentially hear me and uh, watch what I'm doing and moving my hands around, etc. So it's publishing and subscriber, super important concept, but very easy to understand, and same as like pub sub models that we see everywhere else. And here is a diagram that kind of helps you understand. What, where everything fits in. So essentially, we have a client which is a mobile mobile phone or a web browser where the video elements are. But then you have this app server which generates these session IDs and tokens that your client can use to connect to a session and uh, start publishing. And this publishing, obviously, you can go through relayed or routed mode. And the routed mode is uh, when you go through the Open Talk Cloud, the Open Talk services, which also allow you to archive. Um, and we'll go over this in just a little bit. We'll go over into detail in just a little bit. So we have Open Talk archiving and recording, which is essentially you being able to record a session just like we are doing for this one and having it available to replay right after. And we offer these archives in two different formats. One is known as an individual stream, and the other is a composed stream, composed archive. An individual stream is essentially used for post processing. So you have, you know, the individual streams are separate. You have metadata associated to them, so you can use it for synchronizing when the video is there. But it's used to gen customize um, and content and that you have generated essentially. Um, Compose archives, on the other hand, have, uh, you know, they you can compose an archive with multiple streams. You can define different layouts, and you have resolution support. Uh, you can specify. 1280 by 720 or 640 by 480, and we'll go into that in just a little bit. So a layout com control is really important when you have an archive because you might want to show a vertical presentation where you have a tile on your left or all the archives in one focus screen, or you might want to have a best fit, which goes through, you know, which just creates tile across the board on the uh, application with uh, just you know the same size for everybody, or you can have a horizontal presentation. And you can even customize these by having you were using CSS. So you can do all this uh, with layout control that's available when you start the archive. And as we mentioned earlier, just a minute ago, uh, resolution support. So we support uh, resolutions 1280 and 720 for composed archives. 
and 640 by 480 also compose archives. Uh, you cannot specify the resolution for individual streams because these streams, uh, the resolution is different uh, dependent on the device they're on, the network conditions that they set. And storing archives, uh, it's super simple. We allow you to store our archives using AWS S3 and Microsoft Azure. We'll be dropping these links in <clears throat> in these uh, in the chat box so you can see how to set that up as well. Uh, Talkbox has these recordings available for 72 hours, but we don't have them after that. So essentially you need to set up your own uh, storing service. Um, and if you have any questions about the pricing on these archives, you can go to our plans page and check them out there. Uh, so this diagram, I showed this in just a you know minute ago about uh, clients and app servers uh, and starting archives. Uh, so here, essentially, on your app server is where you will start the archive because you don't want to do this on your client. You need the API secret to do it, uh, which is not a good idea to have on the client. Um, and then off, it'll go to the OpenTalk Cloud, and these archives will either be uh, available for 72 hours and then destroyed, or you can offload them to your S3 bucket or your Azure bucket. Um, so you can set that up. They're very simple to do. Next off, I'd like to show you just a full-on application that uses archiving capabilities. Uh, we have a demo application called OpenTalk Demo. It's available at opentalkdemo.talkbox.com. And you can see how you can record everybody. As you can see, we have Talkbox, uh, my, my colleagues here, uh, that they created this screenshot, but they have multiple recordings in place. They're recording everybody to begin with when they press a button. And this is a full-fledged application that's also open source. And we'll be dropping the link in the chat on all the code regarding this application. Uh, next off, uh, just the recording with Crowdcast. This was a webinar we did uh, on Swift and iOS. And you can see that you know different throughout the different steps of this uh, user experience, you can register and you have a waiting room and then the video presentation that we're doing right now. But then since we want to record all of this, you can uh, have the post webinar video replay available within minutes using the archiving feature that we're talking about. Kind of like an inception thing, essentially. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, create an account on talkbox.com. And we're going to actually build an application that has the archiving functionality. So as you can see, I'm on Talkbox's dashboard. I can go to the projects right here, go all the way down and click Create New Project. And I'm going to go ahead and choose a standard project. Um, and not an embeds because embeds doesn't allow you to have archiving. Uh, it's just uh, you can drop an HTML on a you know Wix website or a regular HTML website and get live video, but you won't have a lot of full control over the API. So that's why we're going to go with the standard API. I'm going to click on this and let's go ahead and call it building with open talk archiving just a name that I want to give, and you can select the codec. I'm going to leave it as the default VPA, and I'm going to go ahead and click Create. They'll generate my uh, API key in secret, and so this is required for me to generate uh, sessions and tokens. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, visual code. So as you can see, uh, the code right here, I'm going to add this into my config. So I've already built a Hello World application where live video works, and I'll after adding these credentials, I'll show you just in a second how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy my API key. So let's copy that over and then paste it here. And then let's copy my secret. And remember the secret it should not be shared anywhere. I'm sharing it with you folks, but it'll be deleted right after the webinar. Uh, so just to show you how it works. And now I'm gonna go ahead and open my terminal and I'm already in this directory. So I'm gonna go ahead and click NPM start. This should start my server locally on port 3000. And we're gonna go ahead and visit this page. So we have this, obviously we haven't run it yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and start. And there you can see me. Hi, and you can see live videos already started. If I open up another tab, you can see me click that again. So I'm essentially publishing and subscribing to myself, and I'll show you how to start the archive there. So uh, in our code, right here, we want to go ahead and let's start creating with two buttons that we want to say let's start an archive with. So let's call it button and just a second. So we want to give it an on click handler and let's call this function start archive and we can label this button as start archive, just keeping it very simple. And we can do another button for another on click calling it stop archive because we want to be able to stop our archive 
uh, and have full control over it. So stop archive. So let's go back to our application and see it work. So there it is. We have these two buttons. Obviously, they're not functional yet because we haven't added the functions that correspond with them. So let's go back and do that real quick. I have this opentalk.js file uh, that I've essentially uh, created to for, for joining a Talkbox in session and subscribing to a stream, as you can see here. So I'll, I'll just work in here, and I'll set up a simple function for star archive. So let's call it star archive because that's what we called it for our button. And, and here we'll use the fetch, <clears throat> a fetch uh, way of, you know, making a request. This is available on most browsers. So let's do it for our start archive. And I'll set this endpoint up on our local server just after this. But let's go ahead and work on the um, client side. So I'm going to go ahead and write the post method. And we need headers for this. And we'll do content type and application JSON. So simple as that. And here we have a body that we need to give. So we want to send over some data because we want to say, hey, this is what we want you to use to do this. So now I I'm going to create this data object here. And this data object is going to have my session ID, which is right here. Uh, actually, pulled <coughs> that we have right here. This is going to be generated by the server. So we'll have this available to us. Let's give it a resolution. And remember, I said the resolution can only be specified for composed archives. So we're going to actually say, hey, output mode composed as well. So let's do output mode composed. So now this is available here. Um, and obviously, with fetch requests, we have to have a promise and we'll have a response.json. So this is what it returns. And then another extra bracket here. And then we'll have another then, and we'll have this archive. We'll call it archive data in a JSON format, and we'll let our archive equals archive data. And let's actually set this variable up here. So simple as that. Now, obviously, if there's any issues, we want to be able to catch these errors. So I'm simply going to create an alert box saying there was an error for the sake of simplicity. Was an error starting the archive. So now we have created our functions here for start archive. We need to do the same for stop, stop archive. So we'll do that here. Const stop archive. And remember, we have to still create these endpoints on our server because we're just creating one of the client side right here. So here we'll do fetch. Same thing. So I've actually had this already built. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, bring that in here because it's the same concept over again. But I am creating another endpoint that I'm going to make a request to stop archive with the archive ID. And that's why I created this archive uh, variable here that we're setting. Uh, and when we make this request, we are actually going to generate a link where it's going to have our archives available for us to watch immediately. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's go back to our server code. And in our server code, we're going to actually create the endpoints that we said we would earlier. So we're going to, since we had a post request for starting archive because we have a very, you know, data that we want to pass in, let's go ahead and say, okay, start archive here, and there's a request and a response, it's the callback, and let's actually use the object deconstruction method, uh, resolution, and output mode that we pass in with the data, which is a part of the body of the request. And we'll do this to start an archive. So I just want to go take a step to show you that we are using the Node.js package for OpenTalk. And it's called OpenTalk. And I can simply just instantiate one with the API key and secret that we set earlier and use this throughout my server. So I'm going to go ahead and say OpenTalk.startArchive, which is the method. And we need a session ID for this. So to tell us, hey, we want to record this session. And we wanted to feed our custom parameters, so we'll go ahead and type in output mode and uh, resolution, and we'll get a callback. So as you can see, my Visual Studio is helping me out, telling me, hey, this function has a callback. Either it's an error or you get an archive object. And let's go ahead and get this here. So if there is an error, we want to tell our client endpoint that there was an error. So let's return a status of, we'll just call it 400 for now. 
uh, and then send, and then saying there was an error starting the archive. So simple as that. And then let's have an else statement because if everything is good, we should just simply send over the archive object that they can uh, that the other client side could use. So simple as that. Let's see start archive method. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and create the stop archive endpoint as well. So app.get. It's we had a get request in that one. We'll do stop archive. Request, response, same format. Uh, but in this case, we want to just, with the archive ID, I just passed it as a part of the query params. So we'll just do it here instead of the body because it's a get request and not a post. And we'll do opentalk.stoparchive. It's another method, essentially, that's available with the opentalk um, node package. So we have this archive ID. Oops. And this also takes a callback. And callback is going to be sent same thing. So either you get an error or you do that. So I'm actually just going to copy paste this right here and pop it into this, but obviously stopping the archive in this case. So same concept, starting and stopping. Starting requires you to have the session ID and the optional parameters, and then stopping requires you to have the archive ID, which we'll have available on the client side. So this should work. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to Check it out. I'm going to switch back to my Chrome, and we're going to reload this. And if the starting uh, archive begins successfully, we should be able to see a recording uh, in the UI element. But just to make sure, you know, even if we want to check it out, we're going to go into our open talk JS file on the client side and look up uh, archive started. This is an event that we get. So let's just console log the information from there. So console log. Archive started event. And let's just do this. And we'll do the same thing for archive stop. So the documentation on this is available in our JS SDK. And this is so right here, we're gonna do the event and just keep it consistent. I'm gonna write event back in here. Keep in mind you can do this obviously from mobile devices, so you can make a request from your mobile device to your app server, which will then make a request to the Open Talk Cloud. And please do keep in mind you need to be on the routed mode, so going through the Open Talk media servers and using the service to be able to use archives. So we'll go back to our Google Chrome and reload this. And we're going to my console. And if we start archive, we should be able to see, oh, looks like there was an error. And it's saying start archive was not found which is perfect because we didn't actually restart our server. We created the endpoints, but we didn't restart our server. So I'm gonna go back into our terminal and just do npm start again. And we're gonna load this here. So let's go ahead and click start archive. Perfect. So we got the archiving on in the in the video element, and we also got the event that we looked up in the JS SDK. So now let's go ahead and stop the archive. And I also create, oh, it looks like there was an error for some reason it's setting up, but the archive did stop. So it looks like we messed something up in our code. And I'm going to go ahead and check that out, see what we did here. So stop archive and let's let me check this out. So we have the archive ID. And so let's see right here. Interesting. Should be all good, but we can obviously to debug console log what's going on here. And obviously when building an application, debugging is very important and that's how you understand what's you know going right with your web your application or not. So let's go ahead and start an archive here and then let's go ahead and stop it. There was an error stopping the archive. Okay, so our server should print something out. And there was no error, so not sure what's happening there. But let's check it out again in just a second. If not, we know it's working. We'll come back and check it out. Uh, and let's see. Maybe it's our method right here for stop archive. So we have stop archive. We have this archive data and JSON. And we're going to go ahead and check this out. Right here. And a text node, and so we'll move on to the next step and come back to this one because we know it's working. 
Um, and we'll go ahead and restart our server because we made some changes. Lastly, we want to be able to use the link that's set with the archive object and essentially watch the replay. So I'm going to create a archive.ejs file in our uh, in our views folder here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, and we'll call it archive.ejs. And then we're going to go ahead and write some code in here. I already wrote this out, and for the sake, I'm just going to pass in a URL and a status uh, to this page from the server when it's rendering this page. And the URL will be the URL that we can access immediately to replay it, and we'll pass it in this video element. And then the status is something we'll use to tell us, OK, either the archive has expired, it's not ready yet, so we'll get reload this page again when it's ready, or it'll tell us, hey, we have it on the open top clouds. It's available for 72 hours. So uh, either download it, or you can let it live and you know die out, essentially. So let's go ahead here and reload this page. Excuse me. Um, obviously, when we start the archive and stop, it's not going to work here. Um, the reason is the <clears throat> excuse me uh, it's not going to work because we won't be able to uh, we haven't written the method here to view the archive so let's go back into the index here and write this out for us and it's a very simple method so I'm going to go ahead and just simply copy it over it's just another get request and to the view archive <clears throat> endpoint and here you will be able to uh, get the archive so the get archive call with the archive ID and then we'll be able to use this URL and status and post it back there there it is, and here we're going to go back to our open talk, and we want to make sure everything is great here. So we have a stop archive function. We have the stop archive here. We're going to get the data. We're going to create a video link, uh, and then add a text there. Oops. Ah, now I know where the error is coming from. Actually, so we actually we're setting the link here, but we didn't create it in the index. So I'm going to go ahead and create a div here. Because I knew this worked earlier, so I tested it out. So let's check it out right here. So this should actually get us going right back. And since we added the archiving view archive method, we're going to press go back to the server, restart it again. Let's start it here. Start the archive. Starting, stop the archive, and boom, no more error. And the error was happening on the client side because we knew uh, this server was stopping the archive. So now we can click on this link, and it should take us here. Starting. And you can see me replay. So this is available uh, for you immediately. I can either download this or I can uh, simply not, you know, worry about that at all. So simple as that. Well, you have the archiving available, avail archiving ability available for you immediately. And this is the endpoint we're using based on the archive ID. So as you can see, it took us less than ten minutes to set this all up. And uh, this code is available for different SDKs. So if you're using the Node SDK the PHP SDK, the Java SDK, the .NET SDK, Python SDK, or the Ruby SDK on the server side, you can start and stop archives and have them available for you. Um, that's just really simple to get it going. And if you want to see two people, we can get two people in the session. And then here, let's go ahead and mute myself here. I can start an archive, and then archiving is on. I can stop the archiving is here as well. And then I can go ahead and view it. And as you can see, the archive is not ready yet, but it takes about just a second to get it going. And then archiving is and then you can see there's two of me. So I use you know the best fit layout, and this will get more and more tiles as many as many people I am. Um, just, you can only use it for nine streams. After that, the ninth, the tenth stream and all will not be recorded. Um, you could also do archiving audio only or video only, depending on the properties that you want to set here with the archives. So uh, essentially. All this is available um, on the documentation, and we're sharing these links in the video chat, and we'll also be doing it um, out in the replay and a follow up possibly with the blog post that explains us how to use it as well. Um, so I did want to go and take a second to point you to the repo where it has all the code for a full fledged OpenTalk application. And so here it is. It's called OpenTalk RTC V2. And we're going to paste this in the chat box as well. And you can see that. This this is available. For, you can use it for archiving. The setup is there. Uh, we're using Firebase to store the session IDs, but this application essentially has all the features for TalkBox that are available for you. So um, archiving, and you want to set up dialogue with SIP, all that's available. So do check this application out. It's a really great resource. It's open source code, and if you find any issues, if you want to update the application, and you think it'll be great for everybody else to discover your findings, 
send a PR and we'll be happy to accept that as well. And lastly, I do want to take a second to grab this ID here and go over the Archive Inspector. And Archive Inspector is a tool that allows you to inspect archives, check the status, and I'm going to go ahead and press Submit on this. And it's going to take a quick second, load some data for me. But you can see it specified the resolution to 640 by 480. That's what we set. Uh, it's a composed archive. Uh, the status, archive worked as expected. And session ID is tied to what time we created it about two minutes ago. Um, and if you want to see it with a different resolution, we can do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead in my client side code, go to OpenTalk.js here, and let's set this here 1280 by 720. So we're going to get like, you know, some high definition resolution here. And since we didn't make any changes on the server, we can simply go to our local host and start this again. And let's press start archive. And archiving started. Stop the archive. So we only want to do it for just a second. And then we can click on this link. It'll take us and archiving started. You can see me speaking with the feedback. Uh, essentially, here is the archive ID that we want to inspect. I'm going to go into the session, submit it here, and then it'll pull up the data immediately. And look, it said the resolution was 1280. This information is actually available for you in the server side code when you pull down, you know, you get the archive object back as a response. Uh, when there's no error. So I uh, just want to show you how you can have, you know, use your visual inspector tool to see how the archives are working as well. And so that's all we have today, but I'm going to just recommend, please do ask some questions, ask the polls. I'm going to go ahead and take a moment so everybody can check out the polls and we'll go from there. So we have two poll questions. Both of them are, do you use OpenTalk recording and archiving in your applications? And the other one is, if you are using it or interested in it, what are your most important use cases? Definitely let us know and see where we can fit and help you out with that. I'm going to actually, let's go ahead and bring this up and share our my screen. So you can see, this is my screen here. Uh, and here are the poll questions. So definitely do have, go ahead and answer these questions right here. Um, and so we can understand where we can help you out. And if you're interested in seeing another webinar, please let us know on what the next one's going to be on network testing. And then, um, you know, just to see what network conditions you are, how to have the best, most optimal network conditions to use an OpenTalk, you know, session. And let's go ahead and move over to the Ask a Question page. So first question was, does TalkBox recording include some method of recording signaling events or just audio video streams? Um, unfortunately, you cannot record signaling events. Uh, the signaling events are essentially if you listen to them or you don't, they're gone. Um, so you would have to have your own service to do that. Unfortunately, as of now, it's not possible. The next question we have, uh, will the event be on embedding in OpenTalk? So no, this event was on archiving. We had answered this already, but just wanted to tell everybody we have done an event on embeds and adding live video. So you want to definitely check out the past webinars. It's available on Crowdcast or our developer center link that we'll add shortly into the chat box. How do I do custom file names for archiving? So if you have, uh, you can add the name of the archive, but I'm not sure if you, uh, your question so custom. So if you want to have a different name archive specifically, uh, I have to check your S3 and Azure settings for that one, but I'll definitely get back to your question on how to set that up. On Unity, can you pass frames to the render plugin so they're used as a video capture device? Uh, it's a very specific question. It's not related to the OpenTalk archiving, so I'll skip this one and come back to you on this one, just because I think that most of the folks are uh, you know, looking for the archive questions here. Is there a point where you can edit a video between archiving and replay? If you're using the individual streams, you can definitely go ahead and edit this. Um, you know, you can, or you can take the compose streams, and it's available in MP4. And you can download and do whatever you want with it, essentially. And the replay is you setting up the replay. So you can make another link for the replay, if that's which it has the edited information. So the application logic is completely up to you. And lastly, hi, recordings work in Safari project? Yes, but make sure you have a Safari OpenTalk project key so you can uh, use it for archiving. And the developer guide on develop that we've shared is really resourceful on answering all these questions, essentially. So you can definitely check out what you can do with it. OK, and I think we have the same question again. We'll get back to that one. 
and uh, we'll see uh, on custom frames to render. Um, is this for the Windows uh, or are you talking about uh, Android for the Unity? Um, you can definitely send that in as a question to our Android samples. I'll actually go ahead and open up our, sorry, our Windows samples. So we have open talk Windows SDK samples and in this repo, oh, Looks like I have the wrong one. I'm going to uh, not share that, but you can def I'll drop in the OpenTalk Windows Unity sample link here so you can check that out and ask the question on there. When I have an open session, I am charged if alone. Uh, if you are subscribing to a stream, you'll be charged for the subscribe minutes. And uh, we have our plans page that'll help you really understand how our pricing structure works. So how you're charged when somebody is in there, if they're using archives and SIP and et cetera. So the different pricing structures are available on our plans page. Any other questions? We'll take a moment and see if there are any more questions that come up. And for the ones that I'll tell you to get back to, I'll definitely address them in the comments um, after the, the session so we can help you out as well. If we're using our OS3 buckets for storing the archives, does TalkBox keep a copy? So it's great. So it's your call to have the fallback there. You can either have them go right to the S3 bucket and not have a fallback as a mechanism as well. The fallback mechanism is there. So in case the S3 bucket upload fails, we'll keep them on our, uh, on our uh, servers for 72 hours. That's the retention policy for those. And we do have information on that as a developer guide as well on how to set the fallback to off. But we do not keep these archives. These are there for temporary storage, as you saw what we did. Uh, so ideally, S3 bucket or Microsoft Azure where you want to store them. You can have encrypted archiving. It's a feature that's available for uh, some enterprise clients or enterprise packages. So definitely, definitely check that out and see uh, about the archive, encrypted archiving. Is it possible to have a preview of the video without an open session? Yes, on the JavaScript web, what you can do is you can initialize a publisher without actually connecting to a session. Um, just to know you'll actually just be looking at yourself and not publishing. And you're not connected, so you don't know if you're sending the stream or not. And this preview mode is also available on Android, I believe. Happy to help. All right, everybody. Thanks for your time today. We're going to go ahead and end the uh, end the webinar here. The replay will be available after this, so you'll be able to see this shortly. Um, and thanks for your time. And I'll definitely address the questions that we had about the Unity plugin. Thank you.